This show is brought to you by Coo Cullen Sportswear. Check out their website for great deals on teamwear on www.cucullensportswear.com or the Coo Cullen Sportswear Facebook page. Hello and welcome to the Backdoor Football Show. Delighted to be joined by Danny Hughes and Johnny McGee and I suppose talking about the game which drew the most attention last week, Donegal Tyrone. Um, what what did you make of it, um, I suppose, first, Danny? Um, it, was, it was a game, I think, that was dictated a lot by the conditions. The conditions played a huge part in the game. Now, I, th- I thought before, you know, before throwing, I did fancy Donegal to come through, and they did. Um, I suppose they come through it um, well, you know, after uh, uh, Derek Callum scored that uh, that goal, was which really, you know, it was really in the melting pot um, then after that. But Donegal come back well, and they took the four points in a row, um, and that really killed that bit of momentum that Tyrone had. I felt that Tyrone had serious chances to go for goal. Um, Brad- Bradley had one that he opted for a point. Peter Hart had a glorious chance. He could have taken it in further. Maybe took the keeper out of it by fist passing it to his right. He had a man on to his right. And I think those couple of moments, you're talking about they got two points, yes. But there was four points on on offer there. Um, and that was the, the one and the losing of that game. Um, again, you know, to, to go to Monaghan Cavan. Uh, I think it'd be interesting to see the stats. Um, from what I've seen, I think Monaghan opted to take four points by fist um, in the game. And all you needed to do in two of those scores, for example, if not all four, but in two of them, if you had opted to take the keeper out of it, a sidestep and go for your goal, they were they were massive chances. And when you when it's so difficult to get, difficult to get inside now of teams who are playing defensive football, I don't understand how some of these boys. I would, if I was coaching our minds and team, I would ban. Boy, you're coming in along the end line. I would ban uh, fellas from up to take to take that uh, to take that choice of score. I just can't understand it. But especially when the game was game was so tight and it's so difficult to get those chances inside. I just don't understand how how the boys didn't go for the, those those killer scores uh, and get those goals. Uh, so thrown in a way. Uh, will will go away and they'll be kicking themselves how they didn't how they didn't make suppose Donegal sweat a wee bit more at the end even though they were but Donegal or Tyrone will see that as an opportunity missed no doubt but I did think that Donegal would come to I think they were marginally the better team but again the conditions you know the conditions dictated a lot of the the, the, the football that could have been played um, you know it was a lot of errors and, and stuff like that but sorry I went on with that a wee bit and Johnny um Psychologically for Donegal is this massive like we've seen in Ulster they've hammered teams but like in a real close game they finally got over the line I suppose that will please them. Yeah, absolutely. Um you know the you can see that the you know there's a, a there's a it's a good balance for Donegal, I believe, you know, they they know how to, to defend and they know how to attack and you know, there's a few set plays like the goal that, that they worked on, like, you know, they were it was a full press by Tyrone and I'm sure, like, I'm surprised that Throne were, were, were got caught with us, you know, because it was a long ball over the top. And for me, you know, that was a big deciding factor in its, in itself, you know. I would have felt, you know, the Throne slightly were the better side. Uh, you know, as Danny alluded to there, you know, um, probably weren't clinical enough in front of the goals. Um, but, uh, you know, I just think that uh, when you got the right balance, um, I just thought they, um, someone, they, they, but the two younger lads that did well for them, you know, um, that chipped in, like, um, what's the, the two lads, I can't think of their name, hold on, I have it here, um, you know, Kieran Thompson and Michael Lanigan, they were like, they were very good, you know, um, and really, where you expect Michael Murphy and one or two of the other lads to step up, the, those two lads were, were excellent yesterday, and they were the go-to guys, and they're, they're on the, what I liked about it, they were on the, la, like, in the right position to take their scores. Do you know what I mean? They were confident and they were getting to the scoring zone where a lot, of, like, they were just, just outside the D on the left or right hand side or in, or like, around the, the three points of the D, right, left and centre. And they were, they were very clinical, you know, and very impressive. And, you know, going into the next day, 
you know, if I'm an opposition manager, like who who's going to pick up like a Murphy, who's going to pick up Thompson, who's going to, so like what it does, it puts a bit more doubt into opposition's backline and management in relation to well, they, these boys need to be minded because when those lads are chipping in with the scores that they got the last day, uh, particularly against their own, who are known for their defensive football, uh, you know, um, they did very well. Yeah, and Danny, Tyrone really struggled at midfield and it was probably the difference. Like you could see when Niall Morgan was forced long yesterday, Tyrone were just not comfortable at all. No, um, and now we'll go back to the National League game where Donegal, basically when Morgan, Donegal had one eye in their defender on the press. And then as soon as that ball, as soon as the uh, the forwards, the Donegal forwards and the Donegal halfbacks were aware that the ball was going was going on, and and it's, yes, there's great keepers out there, Cluxon being one of them, now and Morgan probably being the other one, guys like that that can mask a long kick out. But Morgan, when he decided to go long, Donegal were really on their toes and they were turning to face the ball. And you watch Donegal on a break ball. On a break ball, Donegal don't tend to lose it an awful lot. They, they, they tend to actually double the amount of, of possession stats they can get as opposed to the other team because they're all moving on to the ball. They're not standing still, they're not waiting. And I'm surprised that Tyrone didn't get a better handle on that given that they were cleaned out there two weeks before that. As, a, as you know, I would look at that going, well, why, why weren't they better on the break ball? Why weren't Tyrone aware that Donegal were going to clean that up like they did the last day so I suppose that was one one aspect that we found a wee bit surprising Colin Kavanagh stepped away as you know you know prior to the championship starting and and you could see that bit of physicality around there was lost Conor McKenna was being well shackled he had moved inside for a while Matty Donnelly again it's a different type of role for Matty where he's expecting to go and do a lot of defensive work and a lot of forward work and then when you're trying to win a midfield battle as well. So Don- Donegal were always going to be the stronger uh, the stronger team there. Um, probably did, with the conditions being that they were, did now Morgan want to risk a couple of short kickouts and then get caught um, like um, uh, Owen Bond did uh, for, Don- for Tyrone's goal. So I suppose they had to weigh it up. Um, but I, I do believe that, you know, if you keep doing the same thing over and over again and expect a different result, that can be the, the, it's the definition of insanity. And, uh, I, I, I'm, you know, I'm reluctant to blame Morgan because he's such a class keeper. He's really a class keeper. Um, I think it was just a case that Donegal were better there yesterday and, and are strong at midfield. Um, and even around the half forward line, the big, you know, uh, uh, you usually know from, from doing the, uh, from the stats on that, there's a couple of big six foot two, six foot three players in the half forward line as well that can hit a pattern can find. So um, you know, it just just makes for uh, a, a lot more options from the Donegal side and particularly going forward. Absolutely, and the Paul Brennan um, slap on Michael McKiernan um, seems to be doing the rounds. Was it just the other Johnny, or do you think it should have been more? <laughs> like, I mean, it was, it was a tip. Like, you know, if you're going to go to learn the law, you know, the referee will, you know, um, is going to give a red card for it. So, I mean, there's no way you should strike. You know, you know look, did, t- did you make a meal of it? Absolutely. But, like, at the end of the day, you know, um, you can't be you can't be that silly and, and strike and like that. Do you know what I mean? So, look, it's, you know, particularly, um, you know, with championship football, you might you, you might get away with it in in the league slightly, but you know not when when it's being live on television. Referee has to go by the letter of the law where he struck struck him on the head, and that's the way. He, like I know it's a, I know it's a tip, but he shouldn't be putting his hands on his head. Simple. Yeah, listen, uh, Johnny, John, you know, like it can be and at that level. It's a bit like the Premiership, where if you tackle in the box like Pogba did yesterday, or 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 the, the other guy gets Salah the other day, you're sort of asking for trouble. But it is embarrassing. Uh, if I've been caring, I'd be a bit embarrassed and um, from from the throne perspective. But th- this is, you know, I'm not going to say the throne have form because I've just said it. But there is an element there where you know, um, um, Tierney McCann a couple of years ago got his head ruffled and stuff like that. Nobody wants to see that in the game. And I know, you know, I suppose I'm from a rural kind of country element and the, the first person I would have been barred was my, fa- my father. You know, he, he always drilled into us when we were 
when we're coming up through the ranks that never ever show the opposition that you're hurt, that you're sore, that you're you know, even when you go into a tackle and you come out of it and you're sore, give it give it a while. If you're gonna if you're hurt out of it, just give it a while. Don't let anybody know and I'm sure um uh, anybody that played at that level would be the same. There there was a kind of a and the great Mead teams and the great Dublin teams over the years were don't let anybody think that you, you, you've got hurt out of the last tackle and uh, you know, it's just embarrassing. I, I find it embarrassing. Um, I'd be embarrassed if it, if it was my side. Um, so nobody wants to see that in the game. And, you know, if I was a manager, you'd be looking to have a word on the QT with the player saying, listen, nobody wants to see that. But, you know, throw and have a bit of form there, you know. Yeah, no, I agree with Danny. The, for me, like, you know, and the Black Card has brought that in, into the game, I believe, where lads are going down a lot quicker and they're holding on to their head and they're holding on to whatever right. it to be. And it's one side of the game that has been alluded to is that feign and injury does my head, and, you know. And as Danny lives there, I, you know, I from when I went there with Dublin, I remember getting winded and I got pulled by the scruff by Eamon Heary. And he said, and he said, don't let anybody see you be hurt again. I said, and you know what I mean? And then he pulled me up. And, you know, from that moment, like, you don't want your, 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 your players feign an injury because what happens then is, is though, when you do come and get, tackles and you do get fouled referee then if you got a name for it referee was like jesus he died there do you know what yeah. i mean so you're putting doubts into the referee's mind then and it could be a legitimate good uh, free and you don't get a free in a scoring position because of you've got a history of it so I think, yeah, I think i think i think it needs to, be, it needs to be nipped in the bud i think there's there's an issue there particularly in club football um probably more so than county because there's not the referee hasn't as many obviously it's uh, linesmen and umpires and stuff but lads just jumping down and because because they, they were barely touched, those my head. I, d- I, d- I don't know with the introduction of VAR in, in, in soccer. I suppose you know we'll get a football go to the stage where your referee gets an opportunity to look at a to look at a, an incident again on a monitor. You know, you know that that element of it. I think like if any any man or any referee with the salt had a went over and looked and seen what the ad incident was for his own eyes because he's relying on the linesman and then the linesman's under pressure from from various you know whether it be opposition benches or benches to do mm-hmm. like honestly I think like even tackles now you know if there's anything if there's a tackle up around the neck or a head now the guy's going down for five minutes getting water getting treatment and and maybe you know very very little if anything wrong you know, with them, I think that you know they took in a rule a couple of years ago that unless it was a head injury, the game couldn't be stopped. So now everything's a head injury. So the boys are buying time and stuff. So my big frustration would be that they are stopping it for head injuries. But you know, is it getting to a stage where we actually say, you know, but bar somebody's out cold? Is that the stage that and nobody wants to see that? So yeah, uh, I don't know. It's a difficult one. Yeah, and just back to you, um, Danny. Um, Mickey Harry taking off, Darren McCary, Derek Hannigan, um Was it a poor decision or was it the right decision? Terrible decision. Terrible decision. There's no, you know, you keep your best player on the field. You keep the guys that are scoring on the field. Put it this way. If this was Dublin, if this was Kerry, if this was Mayo, and you had a guy in 1-2, one, 1-3 one, in a match, would you take them off? Absolutely not. You keep your best players on the field. You keep your scoring guys. The guys are in confidence, especially at that level. When, you know, as a forward, when you're scoring one, two, one, three game, or you're scoring three or four points, it's a good return at inter-county level. Johnny will tell you that. It's a good return as a forward if you're getting two or three points, especially the way that they play, especially it is, you know, it is a very defensive mindset there. So, you know, if you're scoring two or three points, you'd be happy with your day's work. Um, why? I I I just um, I'm not saying that Bradley Bradley didn't come Bradley came on and, and contributed. Um, I just don't understand why you would took them two guys off. I I thought they were terrible, two terrible decisions. Yeah, absolutely. And Tyrone obviously missed chances. Johnny hitting the crossbar once or twice. Richie Donnelly slices the ball, goes into Conor McKenna, and he just can't get his foot on it. Not winning kickouts. I suppose they're missed chances and probably not enough possession at the kickouts was really the difference. Yeah, look, absolutely. The primary possession, um, as Danny alluded to there, where Tony Galbraith very strong at, 
And I suppose, you know, it's but also also boils back to, you know, uh like, you know, Noy Morgan's one of the best goalkeepers in the country and maybe you know, what did they work enough on the kickouts? You'd like to think they would have, but like, you know, you know, if you're going in against Tony Gall and who 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 are very good in terms of midfield possession and breaking ball, you know, you know, if you're able to get the kickouts off, it's the, it's down to your back showing for the ball, do you know I mean and, and giving options for, for, for your back line. So like, you know, was it a case that they, they weren't comfortable with that? I don't know. Um it's a strange one because like you know, Niall is good is one of the best keepers in the country. Um and you know, for me, if you're struggling midfield, you know, you, you obviously then you, you know there was no kind of reliable. There's a go-to if you get me. So if you're struggling and you're under pressure, and you're not winning. You're not winning the breaking ball. You're not winning primary possession. You know, there's a go-to where you should have a go-to in terms of a plan B or plan C, and that everyone knows what that that is, and you go after it, and that means even though you're, you know, for me, kick the ball long, uh, sixty yards away, and you flood that area. And you give the call, it's look, we're going on the floor here. You know, they're, they're after the first kick out of doing that, they will know that that's your call. But like, we're getting bodies over there and getting it in and getting the 60 yards away from your your goals and, you know, trying to put an emphasis on it. But like, there's not, as, as Danny would know, you know, there's no um, special coaching or special manual for breaking ball. It's just yeah. attitude and application. Absolutely. You know? And, and it's going on there. And yeah. Sometimes, uh, you know, it comes down to, being ready, uh, momentum going in for the break ball because I spend a lot of time around that area trying to get break ball. And some days it goes for you. There's an element of luck to a breaking ball, absolutely. But it, it comes down to a couple of things. It comes down to making sure you're in the right position and you have a wee bit of momentum going in there. And if you have two or three guides coming from different angles on a breaking ball, the chances are, if you're ahead of your man, which you should be, and you should be, you know, there's chances are you're going to get a break ball. And that's what it comes down to. But that takes a bit of time. And in, in this day and age when it's risk averse, you know, you're talking about 60, 70 percent, um, uh, you know, risk risk um, percentage passes. You know, you're looking to keep keepers are looking to get it up around 70, 80 percent retention. Um, but sometimes some of Dublin's biggest matches, um, thinking back to Kevin McMenamin's scores on the break and stuff, uh, have come down to a 50-50 ball that's come out, attacking the break and getting a hand or a fist into general areas where Dublin players could ball on. And Donegal done that, um, and they worked on it. And, uh, you know, Throne obviously obviously haven't done as much or aren't as, as, as strong there. So, do you know, then we things here, they're two-point game. Do you, you think it's time for for Mickey to finish, Danny? What's your? Or... Uh, I think I think uh, Sean Cavan, uh, which I was surprised at last night. That's very <laughs> political. <laughs> he, he totally dodged, and so I've known Sean, a good lad, absolutely good lad, um, and totally dodged that question. But I'm going to be straight and honest about it. In my opinion, it's all right saying I'm not a throne. I'm far away from uh, from throwing down. From from my perspective, it's, it's you know he's. It's time, it's time Mickey Hard left because for a number of reasons, you know yourself, uh, Johnny, you need a freshness there. I, I honestly believe that a th- team has a three to five year window. Any management team, if it's not going well, it's three years. If it's going well, it's about a five year window. And players, for the sake of the players and for the sake of the county, things need to freshen up. I think any, any longer, I think it becomes selfish on, on behalf of the manager. Because you're really, what you're saying there is that nobody else is available in the county can do as good a job as me. And, and as for the players themselves, I would want players to have a different voice, a different setup, a different way of working. Um, so I, I admire the people that can go on for the length of time that they do. But I think it's got to the stage now where, you know, are you doing more harm than good? Um, and I believe that that's the case. I'm not saying that he's doing any harm. Absolutely not. Mickey Hart's not doing Tyrone any harm. But certainly, I think that there's other guys there that deserve a chance. And I think 18 years is a long, long time. Um, success or no success, I think it's time. There is a change and there's a freshness. And I think the players would welcome it. Even the ones that probably want Mickey to stay, I would say, within the squad, it's... Uh, it's time for a change, no doubt about it. Absolutely. Um, the forwards there as well, Bradley, O'Neill. Johnny, do you think it's maybe where 
a Peter Calvin or someone could come in to go over this Tyrone Dean? Yeah, look, uh, as Danny alluded to there, I think it's, uh, you know, like like Mickey Hart, I was nothing to, to throw on football, obviously. And it's probably one, like it was mentioned last night in the Sunday game, like he's one of the top managers ever to, to, to manage. But as Danny alluded to there, you need, you need a bit of freshness. You know, um, for me, you know, the fact that you've, you've taken off two forwards, they're after chipping in with one, five, one four, one five, you know, um, to me, you know, it's... It, the needs are kind of like Peter Canavan would ideally be the probably the, one of the top candidates because of obviously who he is and, and he has a bit of a county experience, you know. But like you know, it's about having the right package and it's about right, having the right people around you, you know. And I think you know, for what the, for for the players that Tyrone have, they for me they should have, they should be contesting and winning more in terms of the quality and they've showed in flashes where the quality of footballers that they have and then I just feel at times they're on a, they're on a, they're on a leash in terms of what way or in terms of what way they want to play their football but like in terms of quality of forwards that they have and, and the danger that they possess you know and like last year they, like they were unbelievable and I think it was I'm not sure which match it was they, they were excellent and then they got a bit of a trimming with a Donegal I think a game of a trimming and then they reverted back to what and they had they played a nice brand of football in the league and then you know like you know obviously look one swallow doesn't make a summer do you know what I mean for me I think they were they were with Stephen O'Neill was involved and you can see the different times of play that they were doing they were going after and I think you know the way the game has gone at the moment like there's a more emphasis on, 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 on attacking which is great to see and there's high scoring games you know you you will have your your, your defensive teams uh, but I think yeah. Uh, I think Dublin have shown over the over the last few years, and obviously Kerry feelings that the way of going about playing is trying to obviously you have, you have your house in order when you when you when you don't have the ball, but when you have the ball, you know you try and you try and go and score, you know, and then look as we're probably touching it now in a minute, you see what happened with Monaghan. There's a prime example. And the, and they are they are thing that John, Johnny said to have Stephen O'Neill being involved. Okay, over the years that uh, you know, an assistant Tony Donnelly that was involved a long long time, very loyal guy. Tony Donnelly, right hand man. Tony left a number of years ago. Gavin Devlin has come in and he's done a, a, a long stint as well. Stephen O'Neill had come in. He had various ex players that had come in and done a series of stints there. Um, Peter Donnelly, who was a strength and conditioning coach, they coached out of Calvin. Again, he left. Again, uh, you know, only only know, they know within the camp, you know, he was very, very well received, supposedly. But again, all these people are all left the camp, apart from Gavin Devlin, who's, who's been the consistent. But at that point, you're kind of going to yourself, what, what, what point does it fall back on the management here? You can change your background team all you want, but, you know, you have to be, you know, you have to be fair here. You have to be fair. And I think to be fair, it is fair that somebody else gets a crack at it. Um, without, you know, you... <laughs> It's it's just difficult. It is difficult. They're in a real tight spot. Nobody wants to be the one to say, right? Nobody, no county chairman will want that in their CV. The fact that the, you know, the the Mickey Hart didn't get renewing his contract or they pushed him out. Or no, no, nobody will want to take that on. None of the ex players either. You know, they're, they're they've been pretty silent on it. Uh, I would say that there's nobody really put their head above the parapet and said. Right, well, he should go, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Peter Calvin's in a diff bit, bit of a difficult spot where he has a son there now. So yeah. again, you know, do do you? There, there might be, you know, if he does play, if he's not playing well, you know, nepotism, all that kind of stuff kicking in. So, you know, it's a very very difficult one. You have Maliki Rook there, who's been pretty successful. Maliki Rook's a throne man, uh, been very successful with Monaghan, has a real good uh, experience behind him. Again. To, to throw and look for somebody like that, but again, um, there's no oh, there's no easy as as Jim Gavin even found out in his first season where where Donny Gall, kind of how would you say it, the 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 ambushed them um, in Croke Park, and the tactical masterclass from Jim McGuinness, but it took Jim Gavin a season, so again, Tyrone when they transition, uh be easy probably not because somebody's been there for so long and there's no guarantees of success there either but i think they need to start the process sooner rather than later yeah and just before we touch on the last bit of this game the donegal panel uh johnny michael murphy and mark McHugh 
didn't have their best games. Um, two central players who've carried only all three games, Thompson, Langan, but Oshin Gallen just came on and. I suppose it was great to see he didn't fear taking on the shot towards the end. He just went for it. Yeah, no, absolutely. And um, I suppose credit goes to to Colin Bo- or, or um, the manager Bonner. Um, you know, in terms of giving those, you can see over the last two seasons where he's introducing the the, the, the younger lads and they're adding to it, and it's just like adding more strength to their ball. And I think that's for me. If if Donegal get out of Ulster, Ulster so competitive. I was think you know, they I, I think they they really have uh, a really good op- a good chance of getting to the All Ireland final and winning it. You know, I, I think you know it's Dublin, Kerry, and Donegal uh, for for me. You know, um, in terms of the the caliber of players they have. I just think that um, they've done very well in relation to bringing those couple of young lads in, and and you see the last the last league match where they, where against Kerry, you know he 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 had diff- was it ten different ch- changes he made, and they still had made a good count of themselves. They could have easily went down and gone through the motions, but you know he obviously gave lads an opportunity um, to to play against Kerry, and they did well as considering that there was a, like it was a nothing or you know. It was not the game for them, really, not the game for it, but um, they still went down and, and put in a half decent performance. So, look, I think they, they've been very good in, in the sense of how they've gone about their business, you know, bringing, bringing on these few other players and introducing them gradually. And, um, you know, and they've got a, got a real, as you know, the, you know, we're obviously with Dublin, touch on Dublin and, and Kerry, you know, the bench is key to where the game has gone now. And, um, the, you, you know, you're looking, it's no longer the sub, it's the finishers that are coming on. So if you put yourself in, in a strong position and you got lads to come on to finish the job, you know that that just makes the lads who are on the field work harder, knowing that, that when they when they when they're taken off, then the lads that are coming on, they're going to come on to finish the game out. I think that's key in terms of competition for places. And when you've got a, pan, a healthy panel of 25, 30 lads vying for for like two lads per uh, per position, you know it makes life. Difficult but easier for a manager if you get me. That if that makes sense to you, do you know what I mean? Uh, in terms of trying to put things in place, you know. Yeah, and I suppose now moving on to Kevin Monaghan. Kevin winning after extra time. Uh Kevin two fifteen, Monaghan one seventeen. Danny, is it a superb Kevin win or poor Monaghan tactics? Both. Both. Um I don't think you can you can I don't think you can say one without the other. I think it's listen, it's brilliant. Uh, uh, I, there's no way I, th- I said last week, uh, week to you that um, I wrote about it actually last week that there would need to be a bit of a systems meltdown in Monaghan, and that's exactly what we had within the game. Not a total set, you know what? They were six points up cruising, but I'll tell you one of the reasons why, and I think it's very very important, and it highlighted it actually on the Sunday game last night when Conor McManus had turned the ball over and uh, turned the ball over, and then the Monaghan won the ball back, and there was a Two on three, uh, three or three on three situation, and Monaghan decided to go backways. Like, I, I just for me, I'm just looking at that going. Do you know what Monaghan deserve to get beat if that's the way they're going to approach that game? You know, there was no killer instinct with them. There was no uh, ambition. The lack of ambition I felt and some of them periods of play was just astonishing. And uh, you know, Calvin smelt blood. And as the game wore on, they went, uh, they went and they, they killed Monon off. And you know, Monon have nobody to blame but themselves. Over the longer period of the championship, would Monon give the championship a better run? Would they cause more problems to the team? You would have to say on the balance, yes, they would because they've that wee bit of experience. But if I was a Monon player today and supporter, I'd be feeling really sick. They had four or five chances to go for goals, and they opted to take a fisted point. And I felt when you get inside there, especially when, when you look look at the game, there were so many opportunities where the game opened up for Monaghan. And what they done was they decided, do you know what, we're going to play safe here. We're going to take a safe, easy option. And I come back and I really bit them in the ass. And, you know, Calvin, brilliant for them coming in as underdogs um, and all the rest of it. But when you look at it, on the side of the draw that Monaghan were, they're on the same side of the draw as, as down. But Monaghan, given their experience, their Division One status, their history in recent in the, over this last ten years, they were a real good 
a shout to get to one of the final there. And they blew it. And they blew it because they weren't ambitious enough. They decided to um, obviously employ those tactics. I don't know whether they, they thought too much about the game. They probably less, they trained too much tactically for it instead of leaving a wee You always leave a wee bit out there for a wee bit of artist, artistic license from players to let them go and express themselves. Um, so I, I just, I'm just at a loss as to as to why you would approach a game like that. But I'm a purist, so... <laughs> and you're spot on, like, uh, 111 to 14 up, Johnny, they were at halftime. But, like, as Danny was saying, turning back in situations where they had the chance to go forward. But, like, you can look at it as well, two points in one half football, it's never going to get you a result. Yeah, no, look, and you know, one of the best, probably the best forward in your team, and you know who was unbelievable in in the first half, in terms of when the ball was given in quickly and is is it, you know was run off for the goal. I thought it was slightly poor defending on that part, but you know for me, you know you're you're looking for trouble when you're gonna you know, when you're gonna invite teams onto you like that, you know. And believe me, I, I reckon it's a lack of respect that Monaghan showed towards Kevin, yeah. and. And I'm delighted that they bit them in the ass because, you know, whatever, like Mickey Graham, the manager of Cavan, you know, um, I only know too well from Mullinocta, you know, um, that what he brings to, to his teams is that, you know, I never, never give up, never die attitude. And you could see on, the, on the, I think the Mayor, Mayor Fernie was, was, was McCabe, was it? That's right. It was, um, yeah. So like, there's one Cavan man that has been to the, the last success and when, or, you know, in terms of Ulster. Hugely passionate man. You can see in any the war break or half time, he was driving them and driving them and driving them. And you can hear it on the sideline. And you actually see it sometimes when the game was on, getting the push up. Now, and you can see, was it a, was it a master stroke by them? Like I was, I was worried for them because they were dropping off and they were six points down. But maybe were they being cute because they maybe didn't really manage how fit they were. Maybe with the heavy pitch. And then for the last 10 minutes, when they decided, after the, the, the water break, the last water break, they decided to go full out and push up. And, mm. you know, from for the way Monaghan were going into the, you know, if I'm six points up, uh, and I'm not telling my players to try and mine and protect the ball. I'm telling my players to go and finish the game out, put the game to bed, let's get let's keep taking over, let's get our scores on, let's get a eye in for the next day, never take anything for granted. And and I think from that point of view, you know, they deserve to go out, you know, um, and you know, and for for Cavan, you know, the substitutions that they made were were, were very good. What that young lad that came in, the big fella, is um, elegant. Yeah, 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 he was unbelievable. He got man in the match. He come on and like, you know, and for you know, for such a big guy, for for when he took the corner back on Jesus, he took him on and he led to the to to, to, the, to the goal. Was it? I think. Um, was excellent. So, and he won vital ball as well. Like, and you know, you've got like they won vital, vital balls at times. And you know, Roy Began, you know, who was one, who was who was one of the top goalkeepers, and you're wondering why why you stay kicking out on, on top of the big fella. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. like, you know, coming up the field and you know, getting on the ball, and you know, like I call it crab football. If the fo- if there was goalposts on the sideline, they'd be great, but. You know, so but for me, it's, Absolutely. it's 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 it, for me, it's a cop out. It's easy. It's for me. It's uh, you. You want your players to be brave. You want your players to go and win games. You know, and the easiest way to, to I think it's it's look, it's 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 easy coaching that to hold on to possession, totally. pass backwards and sideways, pass backwards and sideways, and you invite. It's easy. The harder thing to do is to teach your players to go and be brave. Still go for the gap, still go for the 60 40 ball, but you're still. But the objective is you lose the ball at the top end of the field. If you've got your players organized or you're, if you're the way of defending, if you lose the ball at the top end of the field, well, you need to be you have to have them organized to get the ball back. So there's a way of means. So if I lose the ball at the top end of the field, let's say left half forward or corner forward, well, I want all my forwards to go narrow and go tight and block the space up on the channel that the ball is up and come down, and which forces them to go back to the keeper or back across the field. So it's about delaying them, about knowing. But for me, okay. like, just... and and the way I look at that, that the way I look at the game is very, you know, possibly too simple. Where if you if you delay, if you delay another team from attacking, and you can force them higher up the field, 
force them high up the field and turn over the ball and turn over mistakes. A lot of defenders now aren't being put under pressure. A lot of players, you know, they're dropping back into that quarterback role and they're not being put under pressure. But if you can, that's what Dublin are so good at and Kerry to an extent as well. They're putting pressure further up the field and they're turning over the ball. And when they're turning over the ball, they're closer to the opposition's goal and they're getting the scores. But the more that you can do that, uh, the higher that you can press them up the field, the chances are that you're going to cause uh, mistakes to happen, balls to break down. And that's why, it's, listen, there's no coincidence, Bayern Munich won the Champions League. Same, it's the exact same process, only you recreate it at rugby level, like Gaelic football, whatever. You, uh, Liverpool, Bayern Munich, Man City, when they're in their pump, they're pressing that ball high up the field. And they're causing mistakes to happen. You cause mistakes to happen there, you're going to turn it over. And you're going to turn it over to attackers like Conor McManus and other Monaghan players that McCarthy and all these other guys that can, when they get the opportunity, when they get the ball, they can put away scores. But again, as Johnny said to it, you got to be brave. And fortune favours the brave. And Monaghan weren't brave. They were complete opposite. They really, they were afraid to go and beat Kevin out the gate the other day. Really afraid to win that game. And it cost them. But the, the energy levels, so on, on the energy levels that you're going to spend on getting lads to track back, particularly, like, this is the thing, is that winter football is a totally different animal than what you're going to play in, in summer. So for lads tracking back in, in terms of the conditions of the weekend, the soft sod, they're, they're not going to last 70 minutes. They're not going to last, you know, doing that. So what you would get uh, by doing a higher press, it's, yeah, it's probably, you're working hard for probably maximum 10, 20 seconds of, of that that time getting the press on the ball. But then when the ball goes, you still have time to recover, but you don't have to run back up the field to get in yourself into position to wait That's for the right. ball. So yeah. like, so there's there's a calculated risk to it, but like there's a higher return. And look, I only look on from own experience with my own club when we won the championship. You know, we got a, you know, one of our main reasons why we got, we won it that year, we got, I think a return of 312 from getting a high press up the field. You know, and it's kind of high press. Teams are out of position because they're looking at on the on, on the kick out or, or breaking ball. You turn them over quickly, and you know they can't get bodies back behind. So look, if it's done properly, I think. Um, but look, it's a prime example uh, for for anyone going forward now. For the other teams, don't don't get too arrogant. And try and think you've won the game and you're six points up. Be brave and go and win the game. You know. Yeah, and like. You think Monaghan would have learned from last year against Cavan, but the Cavan backs were just attacking, attacking. Poor Faulkner done it at stages on McManus, and he done it last year as well. Monaghan didn't seem to learn it. Luke Fortune, Kieran Brady, Garrow Schmidt, like, and I suppose that was taking a lot of energy out of Monaghan forwards, didn't it? It it was, and and Johnny put put a spot on. There there was an argument, sir, that the thought right because the state in Division One. Um, because of the consistency of this last, I suppose you could say that de- decade where Monon have performed really, really above probably where people think that they should be given their, you know, where they're located, their playing uh, fraternity, all that kind of stuff. So you would you would have to think that nobody gives them a shot. Nobody gives them a chance. Calvin being relegated, players, again, like we talked about last week, players that hadn't committed, that are top class players, that hadn't committed pre-COVID. So, you know, I, I could prob- probably wrongly assume that there was maybe issues within the camp as well, that people weren't overly happy if they're not committing. Um, I would always look to that if boys aren't committing for no apparent reason. Um, so, but, you know, they turned it in his head the, the other day. And um, and Monaghan, they, they just, as I say, I go back to the very, very fundamental point that, you know, they never took their chances. Um, the arrogance that was there um, and they were not prepared to be brave and the knockout football there's no back door and you got to be brave um, and I think teams in winter with the conditions the way they're going to be probably for the foreseeable if you high press you have a better chance of turning over that ball on a wet and windy uh, night um, especially if players defenders aren't used to being put under pressure and again it all comes back to being brave and then uh, Listen, you know, for Petty Cavan and the song on the go, and good luck to him. And Johnny, Garrow's McKeon for Cavan. He has to be one of the most underrated footballers in the country. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, no, he did very well. Um, and I think, uh, you know, uh, this 
this uh, I, I passed Plan alluded to last night. I think it was the you were you commented on the loud f- f- full forward. I can't think it was now on top of my head, but you know it's it's great to see you know the freshness and these new players that are coming to the fore. Um, and given given these kind of performances, but also I, I credit that though to the club, the way the club championship was run, run off before the county championship, and as allowed the county managers to see players show their form in a club and the, instead of like you know the way the other way around where it was county force and then but it's allowed managers or players that have shown who are brave who are looking to scores who are looking to play football in the right sense and i think that kind of that that uh, form has allowed these players to produce and you know there's a couple of mayo there with the center force mayo i'm brilliant for remember names but you know you can see where these players have shown form for the clubs and they're, they're can, they've been given a chance with the county which is brilliant they've been called in and you know and it's unbelievable whereas before it's oh detroit and trusted we have to look them at the league match but you know and credit to, to, to some of the managers being brave and bringing bringing these players on and who are trusting the lads who are trying form you know so some of the uh, it, things with um, players like like Sam McKiernan, Monaghan are out now, so Cavan don't run the risk of meeting them again. And that's the beauty about knockout football as well. And Johnny, you played in knockout football. It just it came in in 01, so I would I came in in 02, so I just missed it. But the, the knockout football uh, means that another team can't come back and bite. So the likes of McKiernan gets an odd day out and gets another opportunity to showcase his talent rather than possibly meeting a, a, a Monaghan again down the line where it's very difficult to beat a good team twice. You can catch them on the day, but it's very difficult to to catch a team like Monaghan again. They will have learned their lesson from the first day, but they're out now. So it's a great opportunity this year for those lesser known players that are top players within their county, in their province, in the country, and they'll get a wee bit more of a showcase now this year because you don't have a back door where the usual teams and the usual names will be coming through and coming to the fore. So, you know, you're, you're going to see that hopefully this year. You might have a few all-star nominations because of the one-off nature of the championship. Boys that probably would maybe not get a nomination because they maybe get knocked out further down the line. So there'll be a smaller pool. And, yeah, I, I think it'll be an interesting an interesting championship to pick your best 15 and the likes of McKiernan and stuff will definitely be putting themselves up there. And Johnny, the end of this game is just unreal. Began equalises, then Gallagher gets the free and then Raymond Gallagher, the keeper for Cavan, puts it over the very to win it. Oh, come here, it's excellent. I think you put it over from the 21 meter line, did he? <laughs> <laughs> it's getting, it's getting forward and forward. Oh, can we listen? To have the composure um, known that's the last kick of the game, um and then having the the to be brave to go and do that. Do you know what I mean? To go and win it for you. Like, you know, that's Roy the Rower stuff. And that's what the beauty as Danny lived it, of knockout football. You know, I had look at the pleasure of playing in it um a lot uh, for a few years before the, the back door came in. But um it just means, you know, it's the excitement. Um, you know, and for for look at fairness, you know, the captain of your team coming up and striking the ball and it was a street strike. And like the have the confidence to do that, you know. Fair play to them, um, and uh, like it's another big day out for that for, for those guys, which is great to see. You know, was there something going on between him and McManus during the game? Because they seen McManus scoring the goal and he was going over, which I don't, I don't particularly like to see that. Uh, but I would say I would, I would be surprised if he didn't have a bit of a, a cheeky smile to himself on the way back up the field. You know, but, <laughs> absolutely, uh, absolutely. Yeah, but uh, I don't know whether that was something that was historic or, or where that come from, Paul. Maybe you might know. No, I, I didn't see now, but I see there was a bit of grief, all right, going on between them during the game. But um, going on to the other quarterfinal, Irma scraping over the line against Derry, um, six up at half time, and Derry came back with a fight back. But um, it's a huge win uh, for Irma because they have struggled in recent years in the Ulster Championship, uh, Johnny. Yeah, look, if, credit to Geezer. Um, you know, if uh, look. Uh, he's done a great job there where you consider where they've come from um, and you know and what I what I admire from the uh, Mark County board is that they've given them the time to get to, to put those things in place and was he there four years five years now Danny I think uh, he's uh, six years well this six, is his sixth season I six, think, five years yeah. six 
So, like, you know, Danny Lewis, like, you know, the fact that, like, where they've come from and the fact that they've left him in charge, and I suppose it's probably one of the, probably one of the only examples I would see where a county has given the time to to play, to allow him to Im- influence the culture of what's expected to be Arma, and, and they've progressed steadily over the last few years, and which is great to see that, you know, a county, uh, committee or county board have done that and allowed that and and i'd say only for it's the fact that this geezer i don't think anyone else would have probably got the same time as geezer do you know what i mean but but look a credit where credit's due um now look um it was a tight enough game in the end but like they got some fabulous footballers you know um they're very confident they, they, they have a certain style of play they're very confident of you know giving the conceding the kick out but very confident of getting the ball back you know, which is it can be a high risk game then as well. You know, but um, but yeah, look, it's great to see that the you know the county board will, will has allowed geezer to to implement the philosophy and and the, um, and are even rewards to set steadily got 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 it back to Division One. And um, you know, I'd say he was delighted to get over last Sunday because it was always going to be a trick you with, with, with Derry, you know. So um, and Derry on the on the day could throw anyone over, you know, and that's the beauty of us to football and knockout football, you know. Yeah, and I suppose Irma have some real quality forwards and defensively they looked better than they have uh, in previous games. Uh, Ryan Kennedy and Patrick Burns standing up. But I'd say, Danny, within their own camp, they'd be slightly fancying themselves against Donegal. Absolutely, and why not? You know, Jamie Clark yesterday, and Jamie, you know, I suppose in the last match against Clark, he would have been disappointed. he came off for 60 minutes and the game was in the Melton pot. It was a draw. And the two O'Neills, uh, Ocean O'Neill, kicked two wonderful points to, to, to get Arma over the line, get them promotion against Clare, which isn't easy down there. Um, but Jamie Clark came on form yesterday, two lovely points off the shoulder, you know, doing what he what he does best. He was isolated um, inside on one or two occasions and he was extremely dangerous. Took on two or three men and kicked a lovely score. You've got the O'Neills there, you've got Serby Campbell there, who's been made captain, has been stepped up. You've got Rory Gruden. Grugan kicked four points yesterday, I think, and he continued a brilliant form, run of form that he had in the, in the last two games of the National League. And then you've got Falker at the back that's coming up and kicking scores. Paddy Burns, as you alluded to, uh, Blaine Hughes and Neffs, who, who's developing into a stonekeeper. And then you've got options at midfield now with Grimley, who came in yesterday. Charlie Oak Burns, very, very good player. Far better feet than his father. His father had no feet. Charlie Oak has fantastic feet. And um, when you when you look at Armagh, uh, I I would be my mother, uh, God rest her, she's from Kjarkrup, and, and that's uh, South Armagh. Um, and you know, I suppose I don't have the deep seated hatred. I love beating them, don't get me wrong, but it, I don't have that deep seated hatred. Maybe a lot of down down folk have, but um, for McGinney, as Johnny said, it's, and, and I am very happy that the Cairns a great fellow, a great man manager, and. Their camp always is a happy camp, and he has instilled the conditions that those guys um, need to aspire to to win silverware. And Kieran has put them in place, and to be fair to the county board, they have supported them. So John, Johnny's been bang on. When it had been probably easier for the county board to go with a popular, um, uh, I suppose, with the populism that the under pressure, ex player, blah blah blah, but they've stuck with them. And Kieran has fought his way to the position that he now is finding him. And why wouldn't he be confident going against Donegal? On any given day, anybody can be beat. And I believe in the semi-final of an Ulster Championship, um, Armagh have every chance. The only concern I would have against uh, for Armagh would be in positions that they've been in this last few years where they've been a wee bit indisciplined at the back, giving away frees. They've lost leads. Again, sort of happened in a way yesterday where, you know, there were five, six points up and then Derry crept back into the match. So it would be a wee bit of concern that they go 22 minutes without scoring and uh, Rain O'Neill kicked a couple of beautiful scores to to just pull them away in the end. But, um, you know, as as the season goes on, if, if they can get over Donegal, uh, you know, you're talking about an Ulster final for Armagh. They could well win it. I tipped Armagh to be sort of, I wouldn't say... That there would be, uh, you know, how about said? I tipped Armagh that could be there or thereabouts for an Ulster title this year. Um, 
based on yesterday, it was about going to Derry and winning a game, which they've done. Um, they'll take a lot of positives out of yesterday. Um, and I'm sure McGinney, knowing John, how, how um, forensic he is about things, he'll be looking at those 22 minutes when they didn't score and seeing what they could do better. So, you know, if I was an Armagh supporter and an Armagh player, I'm certainly have no fear to go and play against Donegal. They'll be overwhelmed in favour. But I think Armagh could sneak some. You know, I just think uh, something in the back of my head says I might could sneak that. Yeah, definitely. With the players, they haven't been no surprise. Um, Mayo getting the job done against Leitrim, um, 215 to 10 points. But I suppose a bit of a surprise was Leitrim uh, racing into a four point lead. But Mayo getting the job done and Killian O'Connor looks in very good form. Johnny with 1 9 yesterday. Yeah, look, you look. Keenan O'Connor is Keenan O'Connor, you know, um, for me, you know, you'd expect that from Keenan O'Connor against Legion. No disrespect, as you said there, look, the Legion came out of the traps pretty quickly. Um, you know, this is where you'd like to see, you know, how good this this male team really is. And I suppose, the you know, the Keenan O'Connor was going to be... Freeze, you have four freeze and two forty fives, which is good. But for me, Killian Connor, in terms of from play, is what he needs. He needs more of. I think Mayo, if they are to be more successful or to be real challengers, I think they need more guys chipping in from play. There's an over reliance on Killian O'Connor. Um, and look, they've they've blooded a few players, which is great to see. But I just think, you know, for 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 Mayo to be the contenders that they are. Or, to show, or for them to be contenders is that they need more scoring options from play. I think that's been their Achilles heel and it will still continue to be their Achilles heel, you know, um, particularly against the likes of Kerry or Dublin or even Donegal. You know, um, I just feel that the you know, those, the phrase are only getting so far, you know what I mean? And I just think, you know, look, you'd expect them, expect them to turn over uh, Legion anyway, you know? Yeah, and they weren't overly impressive yesterday, Danny. Um, we're still seeing a lot of the experienced players held in reserve. But going by yesterday's performances and some of the changes made at stages, James Horn really doesn't know Mayo's best team going into the semi-final next week against Roscommon, you'd feel. You, you, would, you would feel that he probably doesn't because of the way the season's panned out. There will be a one half where it was pre-COVID um, and then the other half where players are playing themselves in the form. And maybe all guys that have come in from the club championship who have impressed, and they'll be feeling their way into the panel. Um, but you know, it's the same old, same old uh, for Mayo, where you've got Aidan O'Shea there, who's very, very strong. And later, Killian O'Connor, as, John, as Johnny said, and it does seem to be the case where you're kind of reverting back to the players, the tried and tested guys that have been on the road with them. Um, at Carr came on yesterday. I thought he, he he played. Did he come on or did he start? I think he he, he came on. Yeah, centre forward. He, he came on and he had a lovely flick actually that went over the bar. Um, again, uh, that was a, an example where you know players like him you would nearly want to contribute a wee bit more because you see such potential and like he scored a phenomenal goal. Was it last year? Uh, yeah. Brilliant solo effort. Um. And you're saying this guy's gonna he's gonna carry on the mantle for whatever reason he just hasn't got up to that level that consistent level where you expect it. So to, uh, Mayo will be happy safely in the fact that they're, they're going to you know they've got a game under their belt against Roscommon who are a really good team actually Roscommon really difficult team um, and Mayo won't get it easy in that last week but the fact that they have had games they have had that game against Leitham probably would blow off a few cobwebs and I would like I, I would think that Mayo will come through it. Not be easy, but I think that they will come through it. Um so you know James Horn will be happy that he, he got out of there with a decent win. The conditions were brutal, but the players even be able to get a shower after it, you don't know. Uh, we we you know just to get out and down the road and home because it's not an easy place to go. I, we were beating the National League there in the middle noughties. Uh, it was horrible. Uh, horrible place to go down and, 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 and you know, the travel and all the rest of it. Not a horrible place, lovely place, I'm sure, but it's a horrible place to play if, if Leitham are putting it up to you, which, which, which Leitham did, to be fair to them yesterday. 
So I just uh, from a Leighton perspective, I'd be a wee bit aggrieved if I was a Leighton player. That why they didn't fulfil that fixture against Down even. Do you know, I think that left a bit of a sour taste in my mouth anyway as a Down supporter, why they didn't go down and do that. And maybe if the, you know, Leighton can maybe compete. But again, I think they need to really take a look at, you know, why they didn't fulfil that fixture and stuff. I still think at all times you put a team onto the field. I don't care what I'm, hell or high water, you put a team onto the field. So, um, but they did, did give a good account of themselves, to be fair. Yeah, and moving on to the Leinster Championship action yesterday. Um, Wicklow playing Wexford, Johnny, for the second week in a row, beating them two weeks in a row. Um, it's an unbelievable achievement, really, for Wicklow. Well, come here, listen, um, the lawyer for the lads, um, you know, uh, getting the promotion last week was the, probably would have been their main objective, you know, um, is to get promotion, and uh, get out of Division 4 and into Division 3, and then to go down again to Wexford Park um, and get the, the championship win, you know, it's just credit to the players, and look, I suppose, like Dean Healy, the captain of the team, is the, for me, has been the real driving force of this group. Um, chipped in with a goal yesterday, but you know, I, like I, Dean was a captain under when I was manager as well, and I, I, he just he leads by example. He's just one of those guys that goes, does his job, and he leads and does his football and like do, leads by example and does his talking on the field as much as you know he will be encouraging the lads around him. But I just think that what what he what he's done for that group. And the standard that he's maintained, you know, uh, you know, even in the dark day, or you know, suppose the darker days when we weren't getting, they weren't getting championship wins, um, you know, or you know, weren't getting out of Division Four for so long. And um, but his, in terms of for his his standard of of as an individual and, and as a player, you know, it's as good as I've ever seen. Uh, and that's you know, you can compare with 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 any Dublin player or any Kerry player. And I'm delighted for the lads. You know, there's a lot of guys there. You know, Rory Finn and Shawnee Forlong, who was soldier there for over ten years with with, with Wicklow, and uh, it's great to see. And and Davy's done a great job. In fairness, you know, um, and it's great to see that they're doing that now. Look, come here. I'm a half Wexford man. My mum's from Wexford, so um, I you know I was I was a bit split on who who, who wanted to win, you know. But um, but look, come here uh, to go down and win two weeks and a bounce away. You know, the same opposition. You know, but I think Wexford let themselves down a small bit. You know, two has two got two black cards as far as I'm aware. Um, yeah. you, you can't get you can't be given two black cards. Uh, you know, uh, so that's twenty minutes without you know two players. You know, and just it's 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 you're always going to be find find it a struggle to maintain fourteen players, but uh, to have two down to thirteen is difficult enough, you know. So look, uh, credit where credit's due and delighted delight for for uh, for Wicklow and um look, I suppose uh, there's a nice mixture there. There's a lot of young lads that have come in this year uh, or you know and the last two years uh, and they've started they've learned that they've gone along and you can see that there's a kind of uh, there's a, they've got a, a, a nice young panel there but they're playing consistently which is what you want and and listen they're on they're, you know winning breeds confidence and they're on a run now and uh you know i'd only love for them to turn over me now in Ockram on sunday you know <laughs> even, though even though i'm living in me the last fifth 16 years just don't leave the house for a while <laughs> yeah, but uh <laughs> ah, look mayor look mayor they've, they've set it up nicely and made one fancy going down there down to Ockram, you know, um, and uh, you know the confidence that those lads now have, you know, again promotion, putting themselves into 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 the next round of championship and playing made in Ockram, you know. Yeah, and then another quarter final, um, Longford scraping over the line one nine to one seven against Loud, but I suppose when we're talking about this game, it just really has to be about the Sam Mulroy show, Danny, um, he kicked one seven, and that's all that was scored like. <laughs> well, that's it again. Uh... You know, when 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 I looked at this game, I sort of thought that Lowe's wee bit of momentum there against Down, they would have uh, the fact that Mickey Quinn was out. Um, you know, you would have thought that I suppose a lot of people would have thought that Lowe's had an opportunity there, and they'll be very disappointed that they never took that. Um, but you know, you, you're disappointed when you come away with one seven, you don't win the game like uh, on a on a person base. But you know, obviously. It's a very, very tight game. Two very equal teams come down to conditions, come down to on the day, two points, 
you like this is championship football and it's fantastic in one way. It's very, very cruel on the on the team that gets put out. But again, it is a very short season where this season is a bit of a gimme, as we discussed last week, where you have invariably teams maybe looking to, you know, build on any positives or negatives of this year and say, right, we'll come back in January and February and we're gonna to have to hit this league. And the way the leagues or the championship is going to be structured with tier twos, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, you know, it's going to be uh, it's a short season, but one that a lot of teams can get a lot of good, uh, but a good feeling from. And Longford certainly will be delighted to come away with a win. And um, you know, you have to say in the balance that they, you know they deserved it. Yeah, and the other game then in Leinster, Johnny. Um, Offaly three fourteen, Carlow twenty points. Offaly taking a lead, a bit like Mom but they hung on was the difference. But it's really the Offaly veterans sitting up to the plate again. Niall McMay one two again. I just love to see his scoring records. Bernard Allen with one four, and like they just got over the line again. I think they were nine points up at one stage as well. Yeah, look, the the, the experienced hands came to the fore again. You know, and look. Um, when Mac me look, he's a class act, and the fact that he's still going is a, is a testament to him. You know, um, you know, Carlo. In fairness to the lads, you know, I know they were nine points, nine points up, but it just shows to to for the, for Noel Crew and and um, Jerry Brennan, who only took over there. What was it? Pre, just uh, back in was it G- July or something? Yeah, um, yeah. You know, for them to put in that performance, um, you know, and being able to get them to to knock you have that no no die attitude and, and, and keep going well like you, you'd expect it from that group anyway because of the good work that um, Turlock O'Brien had done previously but like you know I felt you would feel like if the lads had a little bit more time with that group you know it probably would have been a different different side of it but look mate they, there's a lot of good work going on down in Offaly you know John Martin's there and look Mark Fee he was the, he was the football coach who I had with me with Wicklow in my last year and he's a very good coach and look um uh, and Shane Horn from Kim McCord is involved with them as well. Like so they've got nice footballers, um, you know, and they will cause problems. Like they will take watching. And I think the the, the one thing that like, you know, I find that if you've got for a forward line that that takes a bit of watching, like it's okay. Like that's what I find where, where I'm, I'm going back to, to to Mayo. Teams if like most good teams will have at least two two or three good defenders. And will be able to take up, pick up two or three of the opposition forward line. But if you've got players who are chipping in at different stages, it makes opposition teams diff, more difficult to plan out how we go about shutting these teams down. So when you've got Offaly who are chipping in with scores like that, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven lads who are chipping in with scores, it makes an awful lot, it makes it a little bit difficult then for for opposition's defence or management team to, to, to set up against you. So I think like to, to, to have that though, you know, I think they did very well. And um, look, I mean, they were happy enough to stay to stay in Division 3 as well. So I think um, like John, John, I know Mark Feed, the lads will, will be doing a lot of work down there with them. And look, they, they, look they'll take a bit of watching. They they won't be uh, an easy an easy game if you get me. So I look I'm looking forward to it. I think it will it'll be I'd, I'd add a bit of spice to to the Leinster championship, which has been pretty a dull affair over the last few years, you know, unfortunately. But Johnny, you said funny there something very very true. Your forward line, um, you know, there's been an emphasis on on defence, I suppose, since Jim McGuinness changed the way people are coached and teams are coached and. It was very much a blueprint that a lot of teams, a lot of all counties th- thought that this was the way forward to win games. But the fundamentals of fo- Gaelic football haven't changed in 100 years. If you have a forward line and players that are then can take on a man and take on a score and kick a score, you need to be chipping in from half forward line right through. And I suppose that's where the frustration from a perspective with Tyrone, where they're, they're playing players that are defensively minded line where they're not chipping in with those scores. Whereas Throne, you could say you could say now where you have Cahill McShane, Connor McKenna, Dara Canavan, Bradley, McCurry, you have a forward line there of players, you have invariably other players there that that showed up in a club championship there in Throne that aren't on the panel. So that boys that probably deserve a chance. So you're saying to yourself, there is forwards lines out there, if they're properly utilized and properly used and put in the right position, they can do damage. And awfully, or one of those, um, and 
but it's, it's emphasising that forward play, being brave, being offensive. And I think teams now have the chance this year where the stakes probably, you've won game, so management teams have a bit of a gimme. They have the opportunity to say, right, we're not going to put everybody 15 men behind the ball. Let's go and just play. Let's press. Let's see if we can get a pattern here that will be successful instead of going through this tired old system of trying to defend their way to a result. Spot on once again. And um, Tipperary uh, sc- scraping over the line in the end, Johnny, the Munster Championship against Clare, but they were always in control, really. Um, they were 297 up. Clare got 1 2 in injury time, which probably uh, doesn't reflect the scoreline there. But um, they have Michael Quinlivan back, which is massive. Connor Sweeney scores 1 4. Stephen O'Brien over from the Hurlers. And Paddy Christie involved in the background is massive for tip football as well. Ah, uh, yeah, they're going to win it because Paddy's involved, you know. I know. <laughs> uh, no, look, listen, look, the, the one thing that you know, I, I admire about the Tipperary, you know, they've got some lovely footballers. Quenville, and um, he was, look, if he was any, uh, like, no disrespect in terms of, you know, but if he was on Kerry or he was in Dublin, he would still be in the, the first 15. He's that calibre of player. And when you've got someone like that in, in, your, in your locker, you know, it's very hard to try and uh, defend against because he's just quality. And I think, you know, the the you know, Tipperary got the house in order a long time ago and David Power was involved with that when underage and they put a serious structure to and you can see the quality and some lovely, lovely footballers there, you know, Jack uh, Kenny kicked in or three frees there as well, you know. And they, they would like spread the scores as well. So like for me, they they'll cause they they'll cause a headache, you know, um but like yeah. The, the, I was surprised at Clare, to be honest, because Clare have have been, you know, pretty consistent under, um, what's his name? Colin Collins. Yeah, sorry, Collins. Um, and have been pretty, but like, pretty consistent. But like, when you're, it's very really hard to keep that consistency going. And like, Collins has been there as he was a seven years now or something like that. So, like, you know, with, the, with, with that then, you know, is you would think then is a time to maybe freshen up a small bit, you know, but um, but in terms of what, what Tipperary gave you, you know, I suppose they were probably left a little bit more behind them as well, you know, but um, yeah, they were definitely quality in that side and they'll take watch on the next day. Yeah, and then the other um, quarterfinal, Limerick ruthlessly dispatching Waterford 2-14-9. to I suppose it's interesting in one way they're playing tip in the semi final and Limerick bet tip last year and they're Division 4 champions, so they'll have to take some confidence, uh, Danny. Yeah, um, I suppose, you know, I, I suppose when, you, when you're when you beating a team like that, it gives you massive confidence when you're when you're racking up a score like that, as impressive as that, um, you're, you have to take confidence from it. And, you know, when you're, when you're looking at the game, the next game, it's, it's a game that they can they can win. You're talking about a Division Four and a Division Three team, or two Division Three teams now. So, um, you would have to think that uh, this will be a point or two point either way, and a great opportunity for the other team. So, I think the big disappointment from I suppose going from Tipperary and, and Limerick's perspective is they're not sitting high in the leagues. The leagues do have um, they do have an implication for. The longer term strategy and, and Johnny will be aware of that if, if Wicklow are very difficult to beat in any given 